Well, we've lost like one in four birds in general in North America in the last 50 years, which is, is not good. And grassland birds have actually declined the most out of all the groups. We've got some out here, like we saw the chestnut collared longspur today, that's declined over 70%. So is the lark bunting, which are those black birds with the white wings. A lot of that comes down to cropland conversion, which again is you know, why we'd like to keep rangelands as rangeland, because that perennial cover. Every species out here is contributing to the diversity that we see. You know, there's a lot of people interested in birds, and bird watching is the fastest growing hobby. But more than that, like the birds are completely tied in with the ranching system out here. So, you know, when we talk about livestock producers and the ranching lifestyle, those those two are completely interlinked. That's that's why they're out here, is that that habitat is being maintained as rangeland. If you're trying to improve the habitat for the birds, you're gonna inadvertently help the cattle industry. Hell, my cows don't like to eat two inch grass either, but they will if they have to. But I, I think their, their project of saving more grass is a, is a worthwhile cause. Uh, the wildlife uh, benefits from what we're doing. You see them drinking at the water tanks that we've put in instead of the creeks. They get fresh water and there's so much more grass. We like the saying, what's good for the bird is good for the herd. Um, grassland birds evolved with grazing as a, a natural disturbance in the system. And that's why they're responding to those different grass heights. So the first step from our perspective is rangelands, grazing lands, our habitat. And, you know, we, we like to keep it as habitat. So we're helping producers, you know, strengthen their operation. From the bird perspective, it's everything from a grazing system that promotes those different grass heights, that habitat diversity for a host of species. And from the operational perspective, you know, it's, it's enabling you to have a strong uh, grazing system for your cattle. Um, and so that's kind of where the two come together. When uh, NRCS came out with the conservation implementation strategy for EQIP, we decided we wanted to do something in our resource unit. So I kind of called together all three of our, my offices and then we sat down and we decided we wanted to do something with grassland birds. We have Jessica's position with the American Bird Conservancy and we have another partnership position in Faith that is with Pheasants Forever but is also targeted to grassland birds. So we knew we wanted to do that so then we just kind of focused on that and then Jessica and the Pheasants Forever biologist got together and wrote this CIS agreement for the curlew. We really wanted to get 21,000 acres of prescribed grazing on the landscape and 670 acres of annual cropland seeded down to perennial species. And we wanted to do this to focus on the curlew. Northwest South Dakota is really special for birds. Uh, we've got a really high diversity of grassland birds, many of which have declined, and this is some of the best remaining habitat out there. So when we were thinking about local things we could focus on, we thought of the long-billed curlew. It's our largest shorebird, and it's endemic to the Great Plains. It migrates here from Mexico and California and other parts of kind of the southern coast uh, every year and uh, everyone knows the curlew, so ranchers and conservation people and everyone alike. It's a very noticeable species, so it's got this really long curved bill and it's actually prehensile, so it's flexible and they can dig around in the mud and dig out little uh, worms and other macroinvertebrates. So we are on year two of the project and so far we've got like 28,000 acres of prescribed grazing and 24 miles of pipeline, over 50 tanks and 800 and some acres of perennial seedings. I don't think it was that hard to reach the goal because producers around here are interested in that stuff already. Like it's pretty good in the county for people to walk in and say this is what I'm looking for. We'll go out there, work with them, because we're invested in them. 
that's another good thing about our office is because we have the other partner positions in our office. They tend to know more about other funding opportunities that we don't typically know about. Uh, producer walks in the door. If we don't have money for Equip or it's a while before Equip comes around, we always can send them to Jessica and she can put them in touch with Gibbon Fish or World Wildlife Fund or American Bird Conservancy, something that might actually have funds that they can get a project done right away when they need it. I bring in the bird habitat angle. Um, NRCS brings in just a wealth of uh, technical information on all sorts of conservation practices. And I've learned a lot from them as well. And then I share that also when I work with World Wildlife Fund, they just launched kind of their own uh, financial assistance program too. So I've been able to share what I've learned from NRCS. All those agencies, you know, a lot of them have their own financial assistance and conservation programs. We've been able to collaborate together um, to, to bring all of these projects that help our landowners and then that way help our land and then of course help our wildlife, which um, all together is what creates a healthy and sustainable ecosystem. It's a good program and very good people to work with over there in the office. They, they're very helpful and you, know, you run into a hiccup, they, they can always seem to get you back on line and, and get, get things figured out and we've had very good response with them. We all want to help the people and the land and the animals so when it comes down to it you know we we work with the producer to determine you know what the best option is to fit you know what they're looking for so you know that could be a combination of working with an RCS it could be going you know some of these nonprofit routes or the state government. Sometimes it's just bouncing ideas over over coffee and you know, looking at a map and then driving out in the pasture and seeing it for itself. And that's how we come up with some good plans, I think. Our soil health probably isn't where it needs to be, um, but it's just kind of a journey of sorts, I guess. And so hopefully we're taking one more step towards it by uh, doing this equip plans with this Curlew project to kind of make this a better ranch for my kids' generation. Holistically, when you have good rangeland habitat, when you have like good bird habitat, you also do have good soil health and you've got the diversity of vegetation and you know, you, you've got a healthier operation and a healthier landscape for it. So it does all definitely come together like that.